Okay, good morning, everyone. We'll get started. I'll call the uh, special meeting of the New York State Fire Prevention and Building Code Council to order. My name is Matt Tebow. I'm the designee of Secretary of State Walter Mosley. Okay, as I just noted, this is a special meeting. We've already had our third quarter meeting. That was in July, July 26th. Uh, the purpose of this meeting uh, is pretty limited. We are just here to vote on the final state environmental quality review act seeker scope uh, following the 30 day public comment that was held during the month of August and a little bit of September. Uh, at this special meeting and since the public comment period for the NRD just ended a couple of days ago and frankly Still, we are receiving comments at this time. We've received more than 1,500 comments. Um, there, is a, uh, there is no public comment period at this meeting. Okay. Right. Before I go to the roll call, I just want to uh, introduce... Uh, actually, I do log in to do this. <laughs> So at this meeting, I'm going to introduce uh, someone new who's joining Kevin's team. We're very excited to have Larissa Delango, who's our new code compliance specialist too. She's going to help us get through what is going to be a very, very, very busy uh, fall season here as we move towards notice of proposed rulemaking. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, okay, now I'll pass to Kevin to so read the rule and make any announcements. Kevin. Matt Tebow. I'm here. Vincent Apertuo, I'll be here. Sean Hamlin, here. James Cable, here. Robert Hughes, here. Joseph DeStefano, here. Uh, Joseph Palazzola, here. Keith Wen, here. <clears throat> Patrick Dolan, here. Michael Sabatino, here. William Tyne. Here. Dominic Marinelli. Here. So we have 12 with Joseph Toomey and Tim DeRusher absent. And excuse. Yes. Okay, so we have zero members attending from locations not open to the public today. Uh, all 12 members are attending at locations open to the public. And so if members not in attendance in the Albany location, just Make sure if you could please uh, mute your microphones now. And if you wish to speak on mute, state your full name and then speak. As Matt mentioned, there's no public comment period for this meeting and I have no noted agenda changes at this time. Great, thank you, Kevin. I'm gonna run through the agenda real quickly for everybody. I believe that this will be a relatively quick meeting. We'll see. Um, agenda item two is going to be the draft minutes. We're gonna adopt from July 26th. Uh, we have the division update, and that is for the limited purpose of uh, Peniota walking us through some legislation that has been signed by the governor that does affect uh, the code. Uh, so she'll just summarize that and take any questions if we have them. Then we're going to, as I said, the main reason for the meeting, we're going to uh, have Peniota walk us through the seeker final scope and the, I believe it was two comments that we received on that scope. Uh, and then she'll take any questions on that. And then we'll vote. I'll quickly go over the future meetings of which there is only one right now. We haven't figured out 2025 yet. Uh, that is actually a little more difficult process than one would think just because we have to try and make everything work within a two different laws uh, that are controlling our actions from here forward. Um, we'll see if there's any other business We'll go into executive session with regard to uh, so so council can walk us through Mulhern gas uh, and then we'll adjourn for the day. Uh, that should be that. Okay. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, agenda item two: draft minutes of July 26, 2024. Uh, you should have received it in your packets. Are there or by email? I'm so used to the old way we did things. Uh, are there any changes to the minutes? Hearing none, I'll make the motion to approve the draft minutes of July 26, 2024. May I have a second? 
Jim seconds the motion. Okay, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The motion is approved and the draft minutes are also approved and we'll publish those as we always do. Yeah, we're just going to do it. Okay. Took care of it at the beginning. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you both. Agenda item number three, division update. As I said, this is the discussion of the pool barrier legislation and Colbert's Peniota who's going to do most of the talking from your pool. Good morning. Um, so you should have received um, as part of the packet today, the chapter 292 of the laws of 2024. That was signed by the governor on August 29th and it amends executive law section 378, specifically paragraph A of subdivision 14 of executive law 378 previously provided that gates required to be provided in swimming pool enclosures shall be self-closing and self-latching with the latch handle located within the enclosure and at least 40 inches above grade. But chapter 292 of the laws of 2024 removed the requirement that the latch handle be located within the enclosure at least 40 inches above grade and added the requirement that the release mechanism standards shall be developed by the code council based on internationally recognized standards. Therefore, this allows the Code Council to review and adopt requirements that are set forth within internationally recognized standards, such as ICC's model codes. Um, Executive Law Section 378 will be amended in this manner, um, effective December 31st of 2025, but effective immediately the addition, amendment, and or repeal of any rule or regulation necessary for the implementation on the effective date is authorized to be made and completed on or before such effective date. Therefore, staff is in the process of amending the pool gate release mechanism provisions to align with these internationally recognized standards, which will be part of the notice of proposed rulemaking that we see in the future meeting. Any questions? Okay, hearing no questions, we'll close agenda item three and move to agenda item four. Okay, agenda item four, Uniform Code and Energy Code. This is the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Okay, yeah. Seeker. Seeker. So we had a, we, we put it out into the into the journal. It, it was out for 30 days. We received comments, Penny Oda, take it away. Right, so as you might recall that at the July 26th meeting, um, Ben Kaczynski had presented on the overview of the State Environmental Quality Review Act, or SEEKER, as we call it, and the process. And at that time, the Code Council had voted to designate the Code Council as a lead agency for the purpose of environmental review under SEEKER and for the Department of State to act administratively on behalf of the Code Council to file, post, and publish any supporting documents. Um, the Code Council also voted to request that the Department file the positive declarations for the short environmental assessment forms for both the Uniform Code and Energy Code update for meetings at that time, and to request that the Department publish on the Department's website, as well as the notice in the Environmental Notice Bulletin of the draft scope and the draft notice of intent to prepare the draft generic environmental impact statement for the proposed amendments to the codes. Um, this was done and it appeared in the Environmental Notice Bulletin or ENB on August 7th. We did receive uh, public comments for 30 days up until September 6th. And we did receive two comment letters, which we um, made some modifications to the draft scope. And that's what you'll see in the final scope. And as a reminder, this is the scope of the environmental review that will be performed. So you will be seeing in the future the draft generic environmental impact statement, which assesses these um, changes in the code from the environmental perspective. And that will be done concurrently with the notice of proposed rulemaking process with the SAPA documents you normally see. Um, so you did receive a copy of the final scope that staff had worked on. Um, and at this time, the department recommends that the code council request the department to publish the final scope with these responses to comments on the department's website and to also publish the notice of the final scope in the Okay, I'm going to 
take a moment right here and just note because I've heard some things out there in the world. Um, so this scope, right, is the total universe of the things that we might take up in the notice of proposed rulemaking. We have to do that because if we add anything to that scope after this decision by the council, we would have to start all over. So, right, the scope is the outline of the issues. It's not necessarily an adoption of the issues at this time. That's not what this vote is. It's just about what will be assessed from the environment. So, noting that we can remove things from the scope if we need to as this process moves forward, that's okay. Just just noting that for the council, so because I know that some people have said some things like, oh, you're adopting X today. You're not. No. That's not what we're doing. Okay. Uh, okay. So there's going to be, is there any discussion on this so far? Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to make a motion. Penny, I was going to read it, and I'll seek a second. Wait, hold on just a second. Well, hold on. I think Buffalo might be trying to say it. Hold on. Buffalo, let me try to unmute you. It looks like maybe you're. Stuck on mute. Can you hear? I, I can hear you. <laughs> there you go. Okay, thanks. Um, so the this is the scope to do a draft a draft generic impact environmental impact statement. Correct. Will that be being prepared by the department? Correct. So we are going to be the lead agency and oversee our own action. Correct. Okay. I I will I will just say, as someone who does these all the time. This has been one of my pet peeves for a very long time, is that when I'm an applicant doing something, I'm never allowed to be the lead agency and oversee my own process. It's one of the things that makes New York State difficult to do business in because it's an overly complex process for me. Yet when government wants to do the same thing, as a matter of course, lead agent, their lead agency and oversee their own process all the time. And it's remarkably simple when you can be your own lead agency and uncomplex and streamlined, all of these things. I'm not opposed to the premise of being streamlined and getting through this process quickly, but I think it's just another example of how things are done differently for the private sector versus the public sector. And folks at the Department of State and in New York State should take notice of this as they look for areas of regulatory overreach and overcomplication that make the process to build things more expensive and time consuming all the time. This is a perfect example, and I'm, I'm not opposed to it, though. So it, it's, it's in our interest to move this process forward. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Is there any other comments? Okay. I looked at the screen twice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be so kind as to read. For your consideration, I move, one, that the document titled Final Scope to Prepare the Draft Generic Environmental Impact Statement for Proposed Amendment of the New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code and the State Energy Conservation Construction Code be published on the New York State Department of State website and a notice of final scope be published in the Environmental Notice Bulletin for compliance with Article 8 of the Environmental Conservation Law, 6 NYCRR, Section 617.12, C15. And two, that the Department of State shall prepare the draft generic environmental impact statement for proposed amendment of the New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code and the State Energy Conservation Construction Code in accordance with the final scope. So moved. Okay, as I noted, I make that motion. May I have a second for that motion? Robert Hughes seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, I checked twice, hearing none. We're gonna have Kevin call the roll. Kevin, would you be so kind? Matt Tebow. I vote yes on the motion. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes. Sean Hamlin. Yes. James Cable. Yes. Robert Hughes. Yes. Joseph DiStefano. Yes. Joseph Palazzolo. Yes. Keith Wen. Yes. Patrick Dolan. Yes. Michael Sabatino. Yes. William Tyne. Yes. Dominic Marinelli. Yes. Motion carries and we are on to the GEIS to run in conjunction with the notice of proposed. Okay. On to agenda item five, that's future meetings. So 
Right now, the fourth quarter meeting of the New York State Fire Prevention and Building Code Council is scheduled for December 6th. Uh, we're looking at dates in 2025. As I noted earlier, Kevin's going to be in touch with all of you to try and sync it up and make it all work. Uh, once we have those, we'll put them out likely in between meetings uh, so that you will know them before December 6th. Um, with regard to December 6th, I, I believe that you will be having a, a detailed discussion on the, some of the many issues that, that we're going to see uh, changes to the code. Uh, we hope to have the notice of proposed out to you in advance of that so that you have time to look at it. Uh, I will note that this is an incredibly uh, huge undertaking. These guys are moving very quickly. Actually, they're ahead of schedule. So I, I want to congratulate Kevin and Emma. Uh, it's sort of amazing where they are right now in the process um, uh, and what they're proposing. So uh, very good work to staff. Uh, I believe, like I said, we will have a lengthy, uh, lengthy meeting. So everyone should prepare. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a Friday in, in December, but... Uh, I think it's going to be a good discussion. Uh, moving to agenda six, is there any other business before we head towards an executive session? Okay. I checked twice, hearing none. Uh, we will, I'll make the motion to move us into executive session. I move that we enter into executive session to discuss our litigation strategy in the case of Mulhern Gas Company, Inc. et al. versus Walter T. Mosley et al. May I have a second for that motion? Joe DiStefano seconds the motion. Thank you, Mayor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're, we will suspend or We'll stand at ease from the regular session. We'll move into executive session. Kevin will, will take a minute to get us there. Uh, and then we'll come back and adjourn after we do that. Okay, we're back on the record and uh, Kevin tells me the recording has started. Uh, during executive session, uh, council briefed uh, the members on the status and litigation strategy related to Mulhern Gas Company Inc. et al. versus Walter T. Mosley et al. Uh, we are now back in regular session. Uh, I will therefore, uh, unless there's any other business, Right, hearing none, I'll therefore uh, adjourn the meeting uh, until December 6th when we are scheduled to meet again or at the call of the chair if we have to come back sooner than that. I, I truly hope we don't have to do that. I thank you for your indulgence today. I know this was, you know, a lot of you drove a long way to get to offices in order to have a meeting that only lasted uh, 40 minutes. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful fall, everyone.